Remasters and remakes are a great opportunity to give our favourite games a much needed glow up. But while our favourite heroes may look cooler, friendlier or more handsome after their HD makeover, occasionally enemy bosses will go from a clump of benign pixels to something that will haunt our nightmares forever, the makers of the game presumably seeing the remake as a great opportunity to scar us for life. Gah! Here are the bosses that got way scarier in the remake, who are spoilers for the following games. When you hear the word genie, you might think of the late Robin Williams singing a number of brilliant jazzy Disney tunes. But before Aladdin graced our cinema screens, a little game called Link's Awakening appeared on Nintendo Game Boy screens all over the world. Within it was Bottle Grotto, home to a genie in a bottle who sadly wasn't dirty chanteuse Christina Aguilera, but a clown genie who threw fireballs at you. Although a little bit weird, the pixel graphics and limited animations meant that it looked more silly than freaky. And then along came the Link's Awakening HD Switch remake which said, you know what, let's really F these kids up. Upon entering the updated Bottle Grotto in the HD remake, you're greeted with a fully animated balloon-like monstrosity as we discovered to our horror. Is that the boss? Oh my goodness. That's it. Pull its nose off. Oh, oh no! Oh no, I oh. hate it! I hate it! Oh, no. it's horrible eyes and mouth and whole deal. Genie? That's not a genie. That's not a genie, it's That's a, a clown. That's a nightmare clown. I know. Now the genie's gaze follows you as you walk around the room, with it staring you down as it juggles its fireballs, whilst its eyes simultaneously roll around his head. I don't know how it manages to do both. Its new creepy animations also have it taunt you before spiralling back into its bottle. And its two ghost-like forms rotate wildly as they circle around you, like Catherine wheels made of clowns. Even when you defeat it, it flails horribly like a fly drowning in picnic lemonade before it finally explodes, allowing you to leave the cave. I never had a friend like him. Thank f Any advice before this battle? Advice? Hmm. A wise dragon once told me, aim high in life, but watch out for flying boxes. Huh? If you thought the genie from Link's Awakening was going to be the only nightmare clown on this list, well, friend, you really underestimated how many nightmare clowns we have to show you today. Back in the 90s, Spyro fans were introduced to clown boss Jack, the Jack in the Box who was composed purely of triangles. With his angular green face and huge top row of goofy teeth, he ended up looking less like a clown and more like someone had forced half an alligator into a Mardi Gras costume. But when making the Reignited Trilogy, it seems that the art department had taken note of this. In fact, we have the notes right here. Nightmare Clowns. And who boy did they help spring Jack out of the box and into everyone's stress dreams forever. Move over, unexpected exam, because Jack is here with his wide eyes, claw-like hands and snarling pointy grin. These and extra details such as his now tattered wings turn him from possible lizard into... Nightmare Clown. And this terrifying monster jester will make you never want to find out what the hell is in those boxes he's throwing at you. Given that there's nothing else in this design brief, I can only assume it's more smaller nightmare clowns. You'd think the life of a lone space adventurer would be a great one. Total freedom, no one hassling you to reply to emails, and bathing. <laughs> That's going right out the airlock. And indeed, in the early days of Samus Aran's adventuring career, it seemed she was living the high life indeed, pinballing her way around alien catacombs and polishing off monsters with her gun arm. Indeed, it seems no enemy alien could stand in the way of Samus, and certainly not Kraid, a portly boss encountered in the midst of 1986's Metroid for the NES. 
Craig, bless him, attacks by firing spikes from his tummy, as well as what look like fingernails, which is not terribly effective. Perhaps he was hoping his alien appearance would be enough to drive away enemies, which might have worked if poor Craig didn't resemble anything so much as a fossilized hedgehog. I.e. not so scary, unless you find one in the compost pile come springtime. Oh boy, does that stay with you. And so, Metroid players starting out in 2004's Metroid Zero Mission for the Game Boy Advance may well have looked forward to another chance to kick Kraid in his diminutive alien butt, what with Zero Mission being a faithful remake of that very first game. Alright Kraid, time to boot your behind from here to Talon 4. Now to take a big swig of cream soda and casually proceed through this door. Yeah, guess what? Craig must have spent those intervening 18 years monstering protein shakes, because now he is an entire two stories worth of claws and screaming. Craig's actual moves, firing claws and exploding tummy projectiles, are essentially the same as before, but only in the same sense that a kitten's moves are essentially the same as a tiger's, because holy crap, size matters and this boss fight is now a lot, lot scarier. You might attribute this change in Kraid's appearance to pure sadism on Nintendo's part, but in fact this isn't the first time we've glimpsed Giganto Kraid. That was in 1994's Super Metroid, so in fact Zero Mission was just retconning Kraid to his more recent canonical appearance, technically speaking. Well, technically speaking Nintendo, you owe me a cream soda, so... Here you are sir, with Mario's compliments. Oh, damn. Should have asked for a new F-Zero. Five, four, three, two, one. As graphics have improved, Lara Croft's death animations have gone from ooh <coughs> to oof. I'll show you right now by watching one. <coughs> oof. Each time Tomb Raider has been rebooted, many of Lara's foes, whether they be spikes or monsters, have also gotten a nightmarish upgrade. One prime example can be found in Tomb Raider Anniversary. An upgraded, updated version of the original 1996 Tomb Raider, this game gave animals and monsters more depth, texture and Lara death animations compared to their polygonal originals. Life finds a way to kill Lara Croft over and over again. But one enemy got the grossest upgrade of all. At the end of the original Tomb Raider, players came up against genetically engineered monster, the Torso Boss. You can probably guess how he got his name. Just gonna say, someone's been skipping leg day. This thing would drop down from an egg sack and chase Lara around on a platform, with its funny little head making noises like a barking dog trying to start a chainsaw. <laughs> But it was so slow that, even with the old PlayStation controls, you could outmaneuver it by running in a circle and using a few of Lara's incredible gymnastic flips. To take it out, all you had to do was shoot it with a load of bullets until it fully exploded like a two-stage firework. However, on arriving into the same area of Atlantis in Tomb Raider Anniversary, you were treated to something even more horrifying. All new graphics created an egg sac that pulsated hideously before producing this thing. Yeah, Lara! Same! This abomination had even more higher definition muscles on show, which sounds cool, except that it also didn't have any skin. Plus, as it dragged itself towards you on its new fluid-filled sack with its clasping bony hands, you could see that it had definitely had some work done on its huge nightmare skull face. And it emitted a much more terrifying guttural hell demon roar. <laughs> Running around in a circle would no longer cut it. Instead, you had to make sure you'd properly learned Lara's adrenaline shot move, had the platform edge behind you, and took the shot when the sinewy horror charged at you. Oh, wait, what am I forgetting? Oh yeah, you had to shoot its hand off so that it couldn't pull itself back up again. Ooh, 
Ooh, okay, I'm sensing that might have hurt a bit. Still could have been worse. You know what? Thanks to these improved graphics, I'm almost starting to feel sorry for it. But not really. <laughs> The revered honorific Pumpkin King brings to mind Christmas-loving Halloween boy Jack Skellington. We stan a legend. But when running around in medieval, the Pumpkin King was less a suave skelly with the singing voice of Danny Elfman and a highly profitable range in Hot Topic, and more a faceless, boring plant with no character whatsoever. Did anyone order the roast pumpkin? Oh, roasted! After you took out all its pods, this orange ball on a stick would screech at you like a small angry parrot before waggling around like the head of a student trying to stay awake in a particularly boring lecture. It was a pretty easy boss and, after bashing all its pods to bits, was quickly turned to mush once you got enough hits in. But when it came to the 2019 remake, the Pumpkin King got a rather... mucusy makeover. Despite still not having a full face, this gourd monarch was given a huge gaping maw of a mouth that showed off its green and slimy insides. Something tells me you wouldn't want to make pumpkin pie out of this thing. From this, it roared at you and shot smaller pumpkin projectiles, slammed itself into the ground and tried to hit you with now much more wiggly looking tendrils. And the pods were updated to be gross pus filled vine sacks, as if that's something anybody was asking for. There was also an added stage to the fight where the king's outsides matched its green innards, making it look even more like a sad jack-o'-lantern left out two weeks into November. Once it finally died, instead of just keeling over like before, it milked its ooze-filled death scene, screeching like it was trying to win an Oscar. Come on, buddy, you're never gonna get a Hot Topic line looking like that. Look at Jack here. Sleek lines, an actual face, and crucially, no mucus. If you're wondering how horrible the bosses in Alien Syndrome are, just check the manual and see that one of them is simply named ARG. Indeed, this arcade game, which was later ported to several home consoles, served up a positive smorgasbord of stomach-churning enemies, including your very first major foe, a baddie named in that same manual as Squime. Squime is, horribly, a lumpen head attached to a brainy mound of flesh, and adorned with a second head that looks very much like it wants to go home, but has to stick with its mate all night until the pub's shut and it can bundle the main head into a taxi. The Squine boss is, clearly, extremely freaky, so you'd think the makers of the 2004 graphical remaster for the PlayStation 2 were facing an impossible task coming up with something worse. But this is human beings we're talking about! We put a man on the moon! And those heroes dug deep, and by god did they remaster that boss. Yep, in remastered form, the Squine boss is soaked in gore, and boasts a hideous swivelling eye, but somehow not in any of its actual eye sockets. Bravo! What's more, when it takes enough damage, the boss now dissolves in a pool of blood in the most upsetting melting incident since that tub of hagen dazs rolled under my passenger seat. And we can only assume the developers of the original game desperately WANTED crab arms to lunge at you out of an exposed skull, but were tragically limited by 80s hardware. Well, no more! <laughs> Finally, the technology has caught up with the storytelling. Developers usually put a lot of time and effort into designing creatively scary bosses. Other times they go, the pub's open, let's just put in a giant f***ing spider. Such was the case in 1998's Resident Evil. Alongside the truly terrifying T-virus infected dogs and humans was Black Tiger. 
this, misleadingly, was not a majestic ebony big cat, but a spider also infected by the virus. And you'll never guess what happens when a spider is infected. Yes, it becomes the size of a family car. Yay! Fortunately for arachnophobes in 98, video game hardware wasn't powerful enough to effectively recreate the unnerving movement of a large spider walking towards you. But then in 2015 came the HD remaster and Black Tiger got a hideous makeover, which garnered this reaction from one media commentator. This eight-legged miscreation had been given updated creepy animations, an HD furry overcoat, and a more detailed exoskeleton complete with accurate nightmare spider face. <laughs> Fun fact, like snakes, spiders uh, shed their skin as they grow, so there'll be giant cases of that thing just randomly about the Spencer Mansion. <laughs> love that, really. Really love thinking about that. Not only had Black Tiger gone from a bit creepy to, oh my god, that's just a realistic giant f***ing spider, but the decor of the room you were trapped in with it also had an HD update. Gone were the few white lines drawn on the walls and floor. Instead, here was a blanket of giant sticky cobweb strands that looked like they could trap you there forever, so that even if you did kill the giant spider trying to eat you, you'd just be trapped in there with its curled up dead body and... Nah, nah, I'm out, I'm done. I'm going... Nah, mm -hmm. So those were the bosses that started out kind of, you know, like, eh, and then went to like, yeah, uh, in the remaster. Why, why did they do that? Why? It's just, it was the remaster generally too easy? And so they had a whole lot of extra time to add in clowns? <laughs> what, what, what's, the, what's the deal? <laughs> I don't get it. Can you think of any other bosses uh, that got a lot scarier or freakier or just plain weirder in the remaster? If so, drop a note in the comments. And hey, we have more videos for you to watch. This one from us is all about really weird button prompts. And this one down here from Outside Xbox is all about, what's it about, Ellen? Remind me. The silliest names. Let, let me look at it. Oh yes, the silliest names that you were somehow expected to take seriously. And if you enjoyed this, then why not subscribe? <laughs>